Welcome to this short series of tutorials designed to simplify the topic of selections in Photoshop. In this tutorial, we'll cover what selections are and give you some quick examples of when you'll use selections most often. A selection is just a way to isolate part of an image, so any work you do on the image affects just that selected part. One reason to use selections is when you want to change the appearance of part of an image. For example, let's say I want to apply a filter that affects only the flower in this photo. First, I'll select the flower, and I'm going to use a tool called the Quick Selection tool to do this. I'll just click and drag over the flower, and that will automatically select it because it has this high contrast edge. And now I'm going to apply a filter that will affect only the flower. So I'll go up to the Filter menu, I'm going to the Stylize category, and I'll choose Oil Paint. I'm going to leave all the settings here at their defaults. What I want you to see is that this effect is being applied only inside the selection. I'm going to click OK, and all that's left to do is to deselect, and you can deselect by either pressing Command D on the Mac keyboard or Control D on the Windows keyboard, or you could go up to the Select menu and choose Deselect there. Now let's look at another reason to make selections. Often, if you have a photograph, you'll want to adjust only part of the photograph, and this is where selections can really help you. Again, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. And I'm just going to click and drag across all of the foreground. And when it's all selected, I'll go to the bottom of the Layers panel, and I'll click the Add Adjustment Layer icon there. And I'm going to choose a simple Brightness Contrast Adjustment Layer. Then in the Properties panel, I'll have the sliders for the Brightness Contrast Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to drag the Brightness slider over to the right. If I go back down to the Layers panel and turn off that new Brightness Contrast Adjustment Layer, keep your eye on the photo, and you'll see that this adjustment is affecting only the foreground and not the sky as well. Let's look at another reason to use selections. Sometimes you may want to delete part of an image, leaving transparent pixels behind which you could put another background. To do that on this image, I'm going to use another selection tool, the Rectangular Marquee Tool, which is here in the Tools panel. And I'm doing that because I want to select this rectangular area and delete it from the photo. In the Layers panel, I first have to click the Lock icon because the single layer in this photo is a special locked background layer. And then I'll just press the Delete key or the Backspace key on my keyboard. And I'll deselect by pressing Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows. Now, if you like, you can put a different background behind there. To do that, I'm going to go down to the Add New Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'll hold the Command key, that's the Control key on Windows, and click, and that adds a new layer beneath the Photo layer. Let's name this the Photo layer, and we'll name this the Black layer. And with the Black layer selected, I'll go up to the Edit menu, and I'll choose Fill, and I'll choose to Fill with Black, and click OK. One more reason to make a selection is if you want to copy part of an image so you can use that copy on another photo or on the same one. To do that, make sure that you have the right layer selected, the one with the photo, and then click and drag with one of the selection tools in the image. I'm going to use the rectangular marquee to select this brown rectangle in the photo. And then I'm going to copy that by using the keyboard shortcut Command-C on the Mac, that's Control-C on Windows, and then I'll paste a copy that I just selected by using the shortcut Command-V on Mac or Control-V on Windows. In the Layers panel, you can see that that created a brand new layer, and if I turn off all the other layers, you'll see that that new layer contains just the copied rectangle. Now, at first, you don't see it in the image because it's right on top of the original rectangle that I copied, but if I get the Move tool, and then I click on top of the rectangle and drag, you can see the copy moving with me and I'll use it to cover up one of the checkers right there. So that should give you an idea not only of what selections are, but when and why you're likely to use them as you work in Photoshop. Whether you're changing the appearance of part of an image, or adjusting part of a photo, or deleting or copying part of an image. Let's take a look at some basic selection tools, some of the marquee tools and lasso tools. 
and put them to use to change the decor in this scene. We'll cover several different selection methods in this video, so remember that you can pause and rewatch parts of the video if you need to. The Rectangular Marquee tool is used to select rectangular and square selections. We'll use it to select this photo and change its color to match the other photos. Click in a corner of this photo and start dragging to make a rectangular selection. To constrain the selection to a square, hold down the Shift key too and continue to drag. Release your finger from the mouse and then from the Shift key. If you need to move the selection, you can click and drag from inside the selection or use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now let's make a change to this selected area. Go to the bottom of the Layers panel and click the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon and choose Solid Color. That opens the Color Picker, and when it's open, you can go anywhere in the image and click to sample a color. You'll see that this created a new Color Fill layer in the Layers panel. To make the solid blue into a tint, with the Color Fill Adjustment Layer selected, go to the Blend Mode menu at the top of the Layers panel and select Color. Now let's use another tool to select this round wood sculpture. In the Tools panel, click the Rectangular Marquee tool and choose the Elliptical Marquee tool from the Flyout menu. This tool is used to make oval or circular selections. Click on any edge of this round object and start to drag, creating an oval selection. Now keep your finger held down on the mouse or trackpad and press the space bar at the same time and push the selection back to the edge of the object. Still keeping your finger held down on the mouse, release the spacebar and continue to drag out your selection and shape it so that it matches the underlying object. You may need to do this a few times, all without releasing your finger from the mouse. And if you want a perfectly circular selection, you can also try holding down the Shift key during this process. Now let's make use of this selection. Go to the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel again, and this time, Choose Vibrance. Then, in the Properties panel, drag the Vibrance slider over to the right to subtly increase the vividness of the color in the round sculpture. Now let's take a look at a couple of the Lasso tools. Over in the Tools panel, select the Lasso tool. This is a freeform drawing tool. So I'm going to come into the image, and I'm just going to quickly drag inside of the edge of this gold sculpture. I'm not being too careful about where I'm dragging because all I want to do is brighten up the inside of that sculpture. So with that selection active, I'll go down to the bottom of the Layers panel and from the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon, this time I'll choose Brightness Contrast. And I'll drag the Brightness slider over to the right. And that will just brighten up the inside of that sculpture. Another lasso tool that comes in handy is the Polygonal Lasso. To access that, hold down the Lasso tool and choose the Polygonal Lasso tool from the Flyout menu. This tool is used to make straight-edged selections, like the star on the bookshelf. To use this tool, I'll click to add the first point, and then I'll release my finger from the mouse, and you can see that it starts to create this thread. With my finger still off the mouse, I'll go to the next corner, and I'll click to attach the thread there, and then I'll continue around the star doing the same thing just clicking each point where I want to attach the polygonal lasso. When I get back to the beginning, there's a small circle, and if I click there, that will close the selection. By the way, if you don't make it all the way back to the beginning of the selection, try pressing the Escape key to release the polygonal lasso and start again. With that selection active, let's change the color of the star. As before, I'll go down to the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon, and I'll choose Solid Color, and I'll sample a blue color from the image. I'll click OK, and I'll change the new color fill layer to the color blend mode. You also could reduce the opacity of that layer by dragging the opacity slider over to the left, and that will make the tint less strong. And here's a bonus tip. Because we used fill layers and adjustment layers to make changes to these selected areas, our original photo remains intact and we can come back in and re-edit any of these changes at any time. So that's an introduction to using some of the marquee tools and lasso tools to make simple selections in Photoshop.
Often when you're selecting objects in an image, you'll need to make combined selections. I've already started to do that in this image, selecting the two squares and adding color to them on this special color blend mode layer that I added to the layers panel that allows the texture of the underlying image to show through. Let's make some more combined selections. In the Tools panel, select the Rectangle tool. In the Options bar, notice that the first icon is selected by default. And if you leave that selected, when you make any selection and then you click somewhere else, the initial selection disappears. So instead, let's choose the second icon, the Add to Selection icon. By the way, the shortcut for this icon is just to hold the Shift key as you drag out selections. I'll click and drag over one of the rectangles in this image, and I'll do the same across another rectangle, and that adds to the first selection. Let's fill these two rectangles on that color blend mode layer. I'm going to select another color straight out of the image to use. I'll get the eyedropper tool, and I'll click on a blue in the image. Now I could go up to the edit menu and the fill command there, but it's quicker to use the shortcut for filling with the foreground color, which is to press the Option plus Delete keys on a Mac, or the Alt plus Backspace keys on Windows. And then I'll deselect by using the shortcut for deselect, which is Command D on the Mac, or Control D on Windows. So that's how to add to a selection. Let's see how to subtract from a selection. Again, I'll select the Rectangular Marquee tool, and this time in the Options bar, I'll select the Subtract from Selection icon. And by the way, the shortcut for this icon is to hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows as you drag out selections. In the image, I'll click and drag across the entire painting. Now I want to subtract the inner white square, so I'll click and drag over that. And now I have a selection of just the gray border. To add color to that, again, I'm going to press Option plus Delete on the keyboard to fill that selection with the foreground color. That's Alt plus Backspace on a Windows keyboard. And I'll deselect Command D on the Mac, Control D on Windows. There's one more selection combining icon to look at, and that is the Intersect with Selection icon here in the Options bar. I'll select that. And this time, I'm going to use another tool. I'll go to the Rectangular Marquee tool and hold, and I'm going to choose the Single Column Marquee tool instead. So I'll come into the image, and I'm going to click in just about the center, and that creates a single pixel wide selection from top to bottom of the image. Now, I only want this selection to appear inside of that white square, so I'm going to intersect this selection with a selection of the white square. I'll go back to the Rectangular Marquee tool, and I'll click on a corner of the white square, and I'll start to drag, and I'm going to hold down the Shift key to constrain proportions to a square, and as soon as I release my finger from the mouse and from the Shift key, you can see that the resulting selection is an intersection of the two. Let's give this selection a stroke. I'm going to go back to the background layer for this and click on it, and then I'll go up to the Edit menu, and I'll choose Stroke. I'll set the width of the stroke to 3 pixels. I'll click the Color field, and then I'll move into the image, and I'm going to select that same blue color from the photo. And then I'll click OK in the Color Picker, and OK in the Stroke dialog box, and that strokes the selection. And I can deselect by pressing Command-D on the Mac or Control-D on Windows. Now, you don't have to use just one tool when you're combining selections. You can use multiple tools together. So those are some ways to combine selections to get just the selection that you need. The Quick Selection tool is one of the selection tools that you'll use the most. With the Quick Selection tool, you just brush over part of an image to select that area. It's most useful for quickly selecting content that has a well-defined high contrast edge, like the sky in this photo. Select the Quick Selection tool in the Tools panel and then go up to the Options bar and make sure that Auto Enhance is checked. This option can help avoid jaggedy selection edges with the Quick Selection tool, so it's a good idea to turn it on. Notice that by default, the Quick Selection tool is set to the first option in the Options bar, which is Create a New Selection. And there's also an Add to Selection option and a Subtract from Selection option that we'll be exploring as we work. 
Now go into the image and start painting in the sky. And as you do, the Quick Selection tool expands the selection and stops where it finds an edge, which is basically a place where dark pixels meet light pixels, like here where the sky meets the mountain. Notice that when you release your finger from the mouse, the Combine option up here in the Options bar changes automatically to the Add To Selection option. So if you don't get the entire area on your first swipe, you can just paint some more to add to the initial selection without having to manually switch to the Add To option, as you do for other selection tools, like the Marquee and Lasso tools. Now, sometimes the tool will paint over more than you want. In that case, hold down the Option key, that's the Alt key on Windows, and drag over areas that you want to remove from the selection. Now that we have a selection of the sky, let's use it to darken the sky without affecting the rest of the image. Go to the Layers panel and click the Create New Adjustment Layer icon and choose Levels. In the Properties panel, go to the middle slider and drag it just a little to the right to darken the midtones in the selected sky. And that will make the sky look a little darker blue overall. Now let's try making a more complex selection with the Quick Selection tool. I'm going to select the background layer, go up to the Options bar, and set this to its initial Create New Selection option. And then I'll click and drag over this cliff on the right. That's selected a little more than I would like, so I'm going to clean up the edge of the selection by holding down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows, which changes my brush to the Subtract from Selection option. And then I'll click and drag over the areas that I don't want to include in this selection. As you work, you can change the brush size. I want to make my brush smaller, so I'll press the left bracket key on my keyboard a few times. That's the key just to the right of the P key. Then I'll hold down the Option or Alt key again, and I'll remove some areas that I don't want to include in this selection. And sometimes you have to do some back and forth between subtracting from the selection and adding to the selection until you get just the selection that you like. Now that we have a selection, let's add another Levels Adjustment layer to adjust just this area. I'll go to the bottom of the Layers panel, and again, I'll click the Add Adjustment Layer icon and choose Levels. And this time, I'll drag the white slider over to the left to brighten up the very brightest areas. And now I want to make the midtones a little darker, so I'll take the gray slider and I'll drag it slightly to the right. And finally, I'll take the black slider and I'll drag that slightly to the right to bring back some contrast. Let's see a before and after. I'll go down to the Layers panel, and I'll hold the Option key, that's the Alt key on Windows, as I click the eye icon to the left of the background layer. And that shows us just the background layer, the original photo, without the changes we just made. I'll Option or Alt click that eye icon again to show you the after version with the targeted adjustments that we were able to make so quickly with the Quick Selection tool. If you click on the Quick Selection tool in the Tools panel, you'll find another automatic selection tool, the Magic Wand tool. The Quick Selection tool works so well in so many situations that you may be wondering why you'd ever choose the Magic Wand tool. Well, there is at least one situation where the Magic Wand tool can do a better job for you. And that's one like this, where you want a selection to jump the gap. In other words, you want to select pixels that are not next to one another in the image, like the separate areas of blue in this photo. So press on the Quick Selection tool in the Tools panel and select the Magic Wand tool from the Flyout menu. Leave all of the options at their defaults for now, including the check mark on the Contiguous option. In the Layers panel, make sure that the Tree layer is selected and then click anywhere on the bright blue sky in the photo. Because you left Contiguous checked, the Magic Wand tool has selected only the blue pixels that are next to one another, not those that are separated by the tree. So let's do that again, this time with Contiguous unchecked. First deselect by pressing Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on Windows. Then in the Options bar, uncheck Contiguous. And this tells the Magic Wand that you want to select pixels that are not necessarily adjacent to one another. 
Then click on the blue sky. And the magic wand tool jumps the gap presented by the tree and selects all the blue pixels that are similar to the one on which you clicked. Now at first that looks like just what we wanted, but it really isn't a perfect result. If you were to look closely, you'd see that there's a gap between some of the marching ants and the tree. So if you were to delete the selected sky now, there would be a thin border of blue sky left around the trees. One way to fix that is to experiment with another magic wand tool setting, the tolerance setting. So let's deselect Command D on the Mac or Control D on Windows and give the tolerance setting a try. With tolerance set to its default of 32, when you click on a particular blue pixel, the magic wand will select similarly colored pixels within a range of luminance levels that includes 32 levels brighter and 32 levels darker than the pixel you click on. If you increase tolerance, that will increase that luminance range and will result in more blue pixels getting selected. And of course, the opposite would be true if you decrease the tolerance setting. Now, the problem is there's no way to know what value to put in the tolerance box other than to experiment. I've already done that with this image, so I can tell you that we need a much higher tolerance to force the magic wand to select all the pixels that we want it to. So I'm going to type in 70 in this case. Then I'll click on a blue area of the image, and to delete all the selected blue pixels, I'll press Delete or Backspace on my keyboard, and then Command D on the Mac or Control D on Windows to deselect. And that's just the result we wanted to select and delete all of the bright blue sky on the tree layer so we can see down through that area to the more interesting sky on the layer below. Let's switch to another image to talk about another way to control the magic wand tool. Here, I want to select the sky around this biker. And as in the first photo, there are lots of little non-adjacent areas of sky to select. So we'll leave the contiguous setting turned off and we'll go to the tolerance setting and return it to its default of 32 by just typing that in and click somewhere in the sky. That did jump the gaps and selected a lot of the small non-contiguous areas, but it didn't select the whole sky because this sky has a wide range of luminance values from light blue to darker blue. If we were to increase the tolerance to try to include a wider luminance range, we might end up selecting lots more than just the sky. So instead, we'll use the add to selection option. Hold down the shift key on your keyboard to switch to add to selection, and then click on some of the areas that you didn't select initially to include those in the selection. If that also selects some areas that you don't want to include, like down here in the shoe, hold down the option key on the Mac or the alt key on Windows and click there to try to remove those areas from the selection. So now we have a pretty good selection of the sky. Let's go over to the layers panel, click the new fill or adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. And in the properties panel, drag the hue slider to a color that you like. So the next time that you need to jump a gap to select non-adjacent pixels, give the magic wand a try and experiment with its contiguous tolerance and add two options to get just the result that you want. Select subject is the fastest, most automatic way to make a selection. You can access the select subject command by selecting the quick selection tool and going up to its options bar, or you can do that from the magic wand tool or from the select menu, or even from the select and mask workspace. I've selected the quick selection tool and then I'll go up to the options bar and all I have to do is click select subject. In just a moment, Photoshop has analyzed the image, found the most prominent subjects in the photo, which are these flowers, and created a selection around them. Now, sometimes this is all you need. Sometimes you need to fine tune the selection further. All that I want to do is change the color of the selection so it doesn't have to be precise. Using this selection, I'll go to the bottom of the layers panel and I'll click the create new fill and adjustment layer icon and I'll choose hue saturation. And then I'll just drag the hue slider over to the right to change the color of these flowers from hot pink to coral. And the only part of the photo that's affected by this change is the area that had been selected by the select subject command. Now let's try this on another image. Even if you have a more complex subject to select, 
you can use the Select Subject command to get started and then clean up the selection with other selection tools. For example, let's click the Select Subject option up here in the Options bar on this photo. And Photoshop correctly identifies the prominent subject in the photo, the model, and it creates a selection around her. But as you can see, there is some cleanup work to be done on this selection. To do that, I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool, which is selected over here in the Tools panel. Before I click on the image, I'll go up to the Options bar, and I'm going to change this tool from its Create New Selection option to its Add to Selection option, so that I don't lose my automatic selection as soon as I click in the image. And then I'll move into the image, and I'm going to start here removing something from the selection. So I'll hold down the Option key, that's the Alt key on Windows, and I'll click and drag. And I'll just continue around the image this way, removing what I don't want to include in the selection. I can change my brush size as I go by pressing the bracket keys on the keyboard. So I'll press the left bracket key a few times to reduce the size of the brush tip. I'll hold down the Option or Alt key, and I'll remove this area from the selection. I see a few areas to add back into the selection, so I'll release the Option or Alt key. That switches me back to the Add to Selection option, and I'll just come in and drag over those areas. Now, if I were going to cut out this model, I'd need a more precise selection, but this should do for the change that I'd like to make to the model, which is just to try to reduce the contrast in the lighting. So I'll go to the bottom of the Layers panel, and I'll click the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon, and I'll choose Brightness Contrast. Notice as I move the sliders in the Properties panel that the only part of the image that's affected is the model that I'd selected. And that selection does just fine for that job. But as I said, if you wanted to cut the model out and put her on another background, then you'd need a more precise selection. And for that, you may want to start with the Select Subject command and then go into the Select and Mask workspace to work with the sophisticated cleanup tools that you'll find there. No matter which selection tool or method you use, you'll often need to clean up the edges of a selection. And a great place to do that is in the Select and Mask workspace. Here I have a photo with two layers, the model on the top layer, and this photo of a pond on the background layer. I've started a selection already around the model that I'd like to use to hide the background on the model layer so we can see down through to the pond below. Now I'm going to refine that selection in the Select and Mask workspace. Now if you're following along with this tutorial using this image, you can load the selection as you see it here and follow along with me from this point on. To do that, go up to the Select menu and choose Load Selection. Go to the Channel menu, and there you'll find Model. Select Model and click OK, and that will add the selection as you see it here around the model. So now let's take this selection into the Select and Mask workspace. I'll go up to the Options bar for the Quick Selection tool, or I could go to the Select menu and choose Select and Mask, or I could access Select and Mask from the Options bar of other selection tools. I'll click Select and Mask, and that opens the image into a separate workspace, the Select and Mask workspace. Over on the left side of the Select and Mask workspace, there is a Tools panel that has just a few tools in it. I'm going to select the Zoom tool, and then I'm going to click on the image to zoom in, and then I'm going to go over to the right and go to the View menu and choose the view in which I want to work. I'm going to choose the Overlay view here. In the Overlay view, things that aren't selected are red. And so right away, I can see that there's an area here that didn't get selected. Fortunately, there are tools in the Tools panel that will help me. One of those is the Quick Selection tool. And that works the same way as the regular Quick Selection tool out in Photoshop proper. So with this tool, I can come into the image and just drag over that area and it will select it and find the edge and stop the selection there. And I can try the same thing here and up here as well. And I can change the size of this brush by pressing the left bracket key on my keyboard to make it smaller or the right bracket key to make it larger. I'll hold the space bar and I'll drag to see another part of the image. Now here, the edge doesn't look very well defined. 
So I'm going to try another tool here, which is the brush tool. The brush tool is just what it says, a regular brush that you can use to paint in a selection. So I'm just going to carefully paint along this edge, and that will include more of the skirt in the selected area. Now I'll hold down the space bar again, and let's go up and take a look at her hair. Over here is an area where I can still see some of the green background through the strands of her hair. So I'm going to try a different tool to fix this. And that's the second tool in the tools panel. I'll move into the image with that brush. I'm going to make it a little smaller by pressing the left bracket key on the keyboard a few times. And then I'm just going to click on that green to try to remove it, but keep her hair in the selection. And I'll do that over here as well. Now I'd like to see her against a different background. So I'll go over to the view menu and I'll choose on layers. And this shows me how she'll look against the new background layer in the composite. I'll go over to the tools panel and I'm going to double click the hand tool to fit the entire image on the screen. In this view, I can see that some of the edges are a little soft and not smooth. So I'm going to use a couple of sliders over here in the properties panel to fix that. I'll scroll down. And in the global refinements area, I'm going to drag the smooth slider over to the right a bit to try to smooth out the edge of the selection. And I'll drag the contrast slider over to the right to make the edge of the selection a bit sharper. Now, of course, you can spend more time fine tuning the edge of a selection here in the Select and Mask workspace, but we'll go with this for now. So I can show you how you can output the resulting selection. From the Output to menu, I'm going to choose to output as new layer with layer mask because that gives me a lot of flexibility to make changes later. And then I'll click OK. That closes the Select and Mask workspace and takes me back out to Photoshop proper. So here you can see the model with the original background selected out and the new background, the background on the bottom layer, showing through. So that's an introduction to how you can use some of the tools and controls in the Select and Mask workspace to clean up selections that you make with any selection method. If you've made a selection that's relatively complex, or one that you think you may want to use again in the future, it makes sense to save that selection so you can bring it back at any time and use it again. To show you how to do that, I have a photograph, and on top of the photograph, I have this design, these two rectangles. I'll turn off the background layer for a moment so you can see that the two rectangles are on their own layer. Let's start by selecting those two rectangles. Now here's a little trick for selecting objects on a transparent background. If you hold down the Command key, that's the Control key on Windows, and click on the thumbnail on the layer with transparent pixels, the Design layer, that selects only the non-transparent pixels on that layer, in this case, the two rectangles. Now I'm going to go to the Tools panel and select the Elliptical Marquee tool. And I'll make sure that the Intersect With option is highlighted in the Options bar. Now I'll make a circular selection which can be a little tricky, so you may have to practice a couple times to get it just right. I'll come into the image and I'll start dragging an oval selection. Then I'll hold down the Shift key to constrain the selection to a circle. Then with my finger still on the mouse and another finger still on the Shift key, I'll hold down the space bar too, and I'll push the circle up into the left where I want it. Then, still keeping the mouse and the Shift key held down, I'll release the space bar and continue to drag. When I'm happy with the selection, I'll release the mouse and the Shift key, and here's the result. So let's make use of this selection. I'm going to fill it with color on the design layer. So I'll select the design layer, and then I'll go up to the swatches panel, and I'll select a color. You can choose any color you like. And then I'm going to use the shortcut for filling with the foreground color, and that's Option Delete on the Mac or Alt Backspace on Windows. Now, since it took me a little while to make this selection, I'm going to save it, and that will give me the option to bring it back in the future and make a change. I'll go up to the Select menu, and I'll choose Save Selection. I'll give the selection a name. I'll call this My Circle, and I'll click OK. And then I'll deselect by pressing the shortcut Command-D on the Mac or Control-D on Windows. So now let's say that I've saved and closed the image and some time has gone by and I want to go back in and change that purple circle. Even at that point, I can load my selection back in. 
I'll go up to the Select menu. I'll choose Load Selection. I'll go to the Channel menu, and I'll choose my selection by name. And then I'll click OK. To make a change, I'm going to go over to the Tools panel and select the Eyedropper tool and select a color from the image. And now I'll fill the selection with that new color by pressing Option Delete on a Mac or Alt Backspace on Windows. And then I can deselect Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows. Now here's a little bonus information. As you get more advanced in Photoshop, you may want to know more about what's going on under the hood. And when you save a selection, what's happened is, if you go to the Channels panel, you'll see that there is a channel that represents that selection. But in most cases, you won't have to go to the Channels panel to work with a saved selection. You can do it just the way I showed you by saving and loading selections from the Select menu.